How to imitate God? Blessed Paul shows us clearly what power can reach our momentum. Any man that we are, and proves to us that we have the capacity to fly up to heaven itself. Because he left behind him the angels, the archangels and all the remains of the celestial powers, and sometimes he exhorts us to become imitators of Christ by his own example, when he says to us, Be my imitators, as I myself am of Christ, sometimes, disregarding himself even, he seeks to make us go up alone towards God, directly, while saying to us, Become therefore imitators of God. Then, to show us that nothing achieves this imitation so much as a life given for the good of all and taking into consideration the advantage of each, he added, walk in charity. This is why he immediately follows his exhortation, become my imitators, with his remarks on charity, which he shows is the virtue best suited to bring us closer to God. It is that the other virtues are quite insufficient and that they are all relative only to man. Thus when we fight our desires, when we wage war against our greed, when we wage battle against our greed or that we struggle with our tendency to anger, but love is what is common to man and to God. And that is why Christ said, Pray for those who insult you. And so you will be like your Father who is in heaven. Paul confusing with his enemies. Paul, too, knew well that of all the virtues, this was the main one, and he proved it with particular rigor. What is certain is that no one loved his enemies so much, no one did more good to those who maneuvered against him, no one felt the feelings he had for his persecutors. Instead of looking at the harm they were doing him, he looked rather at the community of nature they shared with him, and the more they raged against him like wild beasts, the more he pitied their folly. See the disposition of a father for his son afflicted with dementia, the more the unfortunate father is the victim of his violence, the more the other seeks to trample him cruelly, the more he pities him, the more he sheds tears. Well, this apostle, too diagnosed in the excesses to which the demons pushed against him the symptoms of a state of illness, and this made him redouble his solicitude. So, see how gentle he is for them. How sensitive he is to their error when he speaks to us on their behalf, they who had him whipped five times already, they who had stoned him, they who had enchained, they who were thirsty for his own blood and eager to tear it to pieces all the days of their lives. I bear them this testimony, he said, they have zeal for God. But without the knowledge that a just. And conversely he imposed a break on those who wanted to pounce on his persecutors. Do not nourish thoughts of pride, rather fear. For if God has not spared the natural branches, it is to be feared that he will not spare you more. Tormented by the salvation of the Jews seeing that the Lord had pronounced a sentence of condemnation against them. He did all that was in his power. Without ceasing, he wept over their fate. So much, as far as possible, to obtain for them a shadow, at least, of excuse. At the end of his arguments in the face of their stubbornness and their hardness, he had recourse to prayer. Without ceasing, saying, Brothers, what I wish, what I ask of God for them, is their salvation. He also shows them firm grounds for hope by affirming the gifts and the call of God are without repentance, so that they do not give up definitively and lose themselves. This was to behave from beginning to end as a man full of solicitude for them and totally seized with the burning desire for their salvation. So when he recalls these verses, from Zion will come the Savior who will remove the ungodliness from the midst of Jacob. Yes, he was deeply bruised, crushed seeing them go to waste. And this is why he tried to imagine a thousand ways to appease his own torment, and sometimes he proclaims, From Zion will come the Savior who will remove the ungodliness from the midst of Jacob. Sometimes he affirms, Them to their turn, refused their trust in God, because of the mercy exercised towards you, so that they, in their turn, obtain mercy. Jeremiah, too, when he wants to obtain by all means, by putting all his determination into it, a justification for sinners with the same attitude, saying such times, 
if our faults stand against us. Act in honor of your name, such another time, their road, humans have no, not mastery and man cannot walk by directing his walk well. We can also quote this saying, remember that we are dust. For it is the habit of those who pray for sinners. Even if they have nothing founded to say, they imagine, at least, a shadow of justification for them, and certainly it is not the result of a rigorous approach. And it cannot be set up as a dogma either, but it constitutes an encouragement when one mourns for those who are lost. So, in our turn, let's not look closely, rigorously, at such pleas. Just consider that they are the reaction of an afflicted soul which seeks to have a word heard in favor of sinners, and welcome these words accordingly. Tormented by the salvation of all was this attitude only for the Jews and not for the Gentiles? He was gentler than anyone, both to people of his race and to strangers. Listen then to what he said to Timothy, The servant of the Lord should not be quarrelsome, but affable towards all, ready to instruct, patient in trials, meek when he corrects the contradictors. Taking heed that God may well give to convert and to know the truth, to come to their senses once delivered from the snares of the devil, who holds them captive so that they do his will. Do you want to know how he addresses, again, sinners? Listen to what he writes to the Corinthians. I fear that on my arrival I will not find you as I would like, and a little further on. I fear that on my next visit my God will humble me about you, and that I do not have to grieve about many, who have sinned before, without doing penance for their acts of impurity and debauchery. He writes to the Galatians, My little children whom I bear again in pain, until Christ is formed in you. Look also at how he behaves in favor of the incestuous man. How he afflicts himself as much as him how he begs the others, as much as himself, let charity rule over him. And when he cut him off from the community, it was not without a lot of tears. It is in great despondency and great anguish of heart that I have written to you, not to cause you pain, but so that you can measure the affection that I have for you, and which is so great. Elsewhere, he affirms, I made myself a Jew with the Jews, a subject of the law with the subjects of the law, weak with the weak. I made myself everything to everyone in order to save some of them at all costs. Let us add this sentence again, it is to present every man perfect in Christ. Isn't that a soul that overflows the world on all sides? He had made up his mind to present every man to God, and as far as he was in him, he presented them all to him. One would have said that he alone had the paternity of all humanity, to see him so worried, to see him run, to see him show so much ardor to introduce everyone into the kingdom, by dint of attentions, by dint of exhortations, promising, praying, begging, putting the demons to rout, removing all instigators of corruption, and by his presence, his correspondence, his eloquence, his steps. By his disciples or by his own action, he straightened those who fell, strengthened those who stood firm, awakened those who were downcast, healed those who were crushed, stimulated those who let themselves go, uttered a fearful cry against his adversaries and glared at his enemies. He made one think of an excellent general who would be everywhere. It is he who would watch over the baggage, it is he again who would carry the shield, it is he again who would brandish it to protect, it is he too who would take his place in the line. Doing everything to everyone to his army. Paul in material distress it was not only in the spiritual realm that he showed such thoughtfulness, such dynamism, it is in the material realm as well. Thus, see how he writes to a whole people for one woman. I present to you Phoebus, our sister, deaconess of the church of Sencreas. Receive her in the Lord, in a manner worthy of the saints. And assist her in all circumstances where she may need you. He writes another time, you know Stephanas and his family, I remind you of this so that you, in your turn, put yourselves at the disposal of such men, and a little further on, know how to appreciate such men.
Yes, it is indeed a characteristic of the tenderness of the saints that the help they bring. Even in this domain, look at Elisha already, who not only assisted the woman who had received him spiritually, but who was quick to respond to her generosity materially as well. Hence his question, should I speak for you to the king or to the chief of the army, why should you be surprised that Paul took care to support the people materially in the letters he wrote, when we see him, as well? Not deeming it unworthy to bother with their resources to make the journey he asked of them? To undertake to join it? He mentions it in his letters, thus he writes to Titus. You are sending Zenas the Jurist and Apollos on a mission, take care that they lack nothing. If he took the movement he was making them to do so much to heart, what would he not have accomplished? Seeing them in a position that was even a little difficult? Take for example his letter to Philemon. As he takes the case of one Simus to heart, what judicious solicitude he puts into his letter. Now, a man who did not refuse to write for a slave, moreover a fugitive slave, and who, on top of that, had stolen a lot of money from his master, a whole letter. Imagine what could be his provisions for other men. Only one thing seemed contemptible to him, to neglect all that should contribute to salvation. For this purpose, he moved everything. Not fearing to put himself at the expense of those whom he sought to save, sparing neither words, nor money, nor physical strength, he who gave himself up a thousand and a thousand times to death. A fortiori did not save his money, if indeed he had any. What do I say, if he had any? He had none, and yet it is possible to show that he did not spare it. Oh, don't see that as an enigma. Listen to him again. As for me, I will very gladly spend and spend myself entirely for your souls. In a speech to an assembly of Ephesians he declared, You yourselves know that these are the hands that have provided for my needs and those of my companions. All ardent love with the dimension that was his, Paul, when it comes to the highest virtue. Charity was more violent than the flame itself. And as iron, cast into the fire, becomes entirely fire, so too, inflamed with the fire of charity, became entirely charity. As if he were the common father of all the peoples of the earth, he imitated exactly what the fathers do, and even surpassed them all, for his solicitude was of a material order. But also of a spiritual order, and for those he loved, he lavished his money, his words, his physical strength, his very life, everything. Thus he called charity the plenitude of the law, the bond of perfection, the mother of all goods, the principle and the accomplishment of virtue. This is what made him say, the purpose of this injunction is to give birth to charity in a pure heart, an upright conscience. Elsewhere he affirms the precepts, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, and all the others are summarized in the formula. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If therefore charity is principle and end, if it alone is all the virtues, let it be the ground of our emulation with Paul. What it was. It is charity that is its author. Ah, don't come and talk to me about the dead he raised, the lepers he cured. That's not what God will ask you to account for. Develop charity, that charity which characterizes Paul, and you will receive the crown mounted with perfection. Who gives you this order? The very man who made charity grow in him, this man who put him before signs, wonders and a thousand other things. He who experienced it absolutely to perfection was best able to measure its power very accurately. What it was, once again, it was charity that was its author and nothing made its value like the strength of charity. So he could declare, look for the superior gifts, and I am still going to show you a way that surpasses them all, he was alluding to charity. The most beautiful way, and an easy way. Let us in turn walk in this way, and without stopping, and thus we will meet Paul, or rather his Lord, and we will obtain the only crowns that remain intact. By the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the power now and always and forever and ever. 
Amen.